I'm starting to feel like I'm in way over my head. Oh boy, oh boy. Hi. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jake. I am a traditionally published middle grade and young adult author and I have been doing Camp NaNoWriMo. <laughs> and if you've seen my last few videos, I've had a bit of a hard time motivating myself, just getting in that Camp NaNo spirit. I have a contracted book, middle grade fantasy that I am struggling with and an adult rom-com that I have really been loving writing, but I just got uh, some feedback from my literary agent, which he was super nice about it. He said like he really liked the writing, but that with the market for adult rom-coms, he really wants something more like punchy, more like this elevator pitch could make you want to buy the book one click, whatever. So we got to brainstorm a little bit of that, but that is not what this video is about. This video is about... <laughs> So let's rewind to a few days ago when I was relaxing on the couch, chilling, vibing, having so much fun, and I see a little bug. Now, if I see a little bug, I call in my girlfriend because we all have designated roles in our relationship, and mine is not the bug disposer, killer, remover. My role is to be scared of bugs, and so I call her over it, and I say, please please do what you will with this bug, have your way with it. And she looks at it and goes, oh no. And she was right to say, oh no, because we realized it was a carpet beetle. But we have only found three carpet beetles, knock on wood, knock on wood, and they've all been adult males that can't reproduce. I'm telling myself that. But because of that, we have been in a cleaning frenzy. And the one big cleaning project that I have wanted to do for a really long time and haven't because I'm scared is take all the books out of where they are, clean the shelf, clean the books, and then um, prosper, I guess, would be the last step. So now the carpet beetle incident has really kicked me into high gear with this. I'm scared of what I'll find. We've lived in this apartment for like three years and I um, worked at an independent bookstore for like two of those years and because of that I have a lot of arcs of books. I got a lot of free books. I got a lot of damaged books. I am always picking up books from little free libraries. I'm an author so I get sent books. I have books of my own. So we are, to put it mildly, overrun with books. So what I want to do today is go to every single location in our apartment in which there are books, which is most of them. We have them crammed in every which way. I think the first step, oh god, please save me, is is um, gathering our materials. So let's gather our materials. We've gathered our materials. We have rubbing alcohol, uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, rags, and vacuum with attachment. Most importantly, we have hope for the future. So this is the first bookshelf we're gonna be working on and we're going one cubby at a time. So step one is of course, take every single book out. And not only do we have books on this first layer here, we have books going all the way back. And my job today is to clean books and to clean the bookshelves. Um, and I'm gonna cull my books, but a number of these, not even close to half, probably a fifth, an eighth, are my girlfriend's books. So we're not gonna touch those, but we will clean them. There we go. This is from one sixth of one bookshelf. So uh, that this is gonna be tough. I think what would be best is to take every single book out so I can get behind the bookshelf and potentially underneath. So we're gonna do that. So the bookshelves have been cleared out. This is just from this one bookshelf. <laughs> This is how many books we have. I can already see so much dust on these books. I feel a little disgusted. Um, I think I'm gonna start by cleaning them off and then culling them because I don't wanna put dirty books out on the street in a little free library anyway, so yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'm starting to feel like I'm in way over my head, but we got to do it. We started it and we're going to finish it. And now I need to wipe down all the bookshelves with alcohol to stop anything else from growing in there. And then I'm going to go through, I did like a preliminary clean of the books, get all the main big gross stuff off. And now I'm going to go through each of them, see which ones I want to keep. If they're my girlfriend's automatic keep, she can go through them. Also, all of her books are good, so whatever. And I'm going to go through those and then clean all of them again. So let's do that. I can't believe that this is one bookshelf and there is so much more to do. For the past year or so, I've been really diligent about not adding books to my library. Not because I don't want to have more books, but because we have a lot of books. I don't want to spend that money, even if it is a tax write-off. And so the only books I've really brought home are ones from little free libraries or ones that are sent to me for, you know, my job as a writer. So it's been a really fun exercise to go through the ones I do have and see, like, there are so many books I could be reading um, just within my own library. So my girlfriend is an architect and she has a lot more architecture books than I initially thought. So I think it would be fun to make a whole shelf in this bookshelf that is just her architecture books and surprise her with that when she gets home. So let's do that. So first I'm going to wipe it down with rubbing alcohol. So I'll start with all the architecture books she has. Let's see how I can make them look pretty. I like the way that looks. So now we have to do the ones that are gonna go in the back. <laughs> Don't judge me for all the books we have, please. This is our little architecture design shelf. Not too shabby, huh? Hello, is this the perfect angle? I've organized the nonfiction. I'm seeing, I'm literally staring at more than I didn't organize. Anyway, I've organized some of the nonfiction and I'm gonna put it in this shelf here. But first I have to clean it out. Icky, icky. So let's start organizing these and seeing what looks good. Maybe it's my overactive imagination, but a lot of times when I look at my bookshelf, I imagine like what if there was an apocalyptic scenario where I couldn't leave my apartment building and like the only currency was with my neighbors was that we could like trade books and tell stories. It kind of reminds me of this play I once read called like Mr. Burns, I think, which is an amazing play. You should read it. And so having so many books just makes me feel really happy because I'm like, I'll be so rich in the apocalypse. Obviously, I won't be adding anything to this bookshelf. No, this is just my son. This is where Fawn lives. Yeah. serious about putting stuff back in here but i think with the way i've reorganized and the books i've put aside to donate i will have enough space for one free shelf and we're gonna need that for all the books that are in random locations that i want to get out of those random locations and into a bookshelf so let's put stuff back and leave one whole cube available so let's do that what is this is this a chapstick ew it is God, it's gross back here. Ew. This and this, and these, and this. Ugh, what disgusting thing is gonna be back here? Just dust, which is disgusting in its own way. Wow, and that's literally everything. Oh my God, we have more than a shelf left. So right now, this is what we're working with. From that first round, these are the ones I'm bringing to a little free library. If I want to reread The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants series, oh my God, I forgot about all those books on the shelf. <laughs> That's why there's so much space. I just forgot about all these books. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna figure that out later. This is a hot mess. I'm gonna do some more vacuuming. My tripod also just broke again. So I'm gonna fix that. And then we're gonna come back for the second bookshelf. Okay, this whole area is next. This is a hot mess. We'll dive into her in a minute, but we have to start with this. 
this is a mess because it's right next to the couch and this area has been where i've stored books for the middle grade fantasy project i'm working on that have helped and inspired me and then i don't know what else is going on in here so we need to figure this out and we need to go through everything and we need to clean it and we're gonna do that but first we need to move the couch fun does not want me to move the couch well here's my stonewall honor <laughs> Okay, this is literally just the top three bookshelves. Sir, it's so dirty in there. So I'm, oh, okay, there he goes. Why did I do this? I'm so overwhelmed, but it's good that I'm doing it. It's good that I'm doing it. We're gonna go through these books stack by stack and decide what to keep. Okay, so I have a whole shelf of like queer books, basically, like lesbian letters, nonfiction, etc. It like definitely blends in with some of the other stuff on the other bookshelf. A lot of these are middle grade and young adult books um, that I have from like getting sent them because I work in that genre, etc, etc. So we're going to just go through these. No modernism without lesbian. This is my favorite <laughs> collection of letters of all time. It is the letters of Vita Sackville West to Virginia Woolf. I just read these when I am sad and I love them. Justine, a novel. I really, oh yeah, I got this because it says when Long Island Teenager Alley visits the local stop and shop. And I was like, gag, Long Island Teenager visiting the local stop and shop. It's giving me. I'm literally trapped in a pile of books and I cannot get out. Don't even have half of the books out from that bookshelf, or at least that's what it feels like. All the ones that were on top of the bookshelf are still over there and so many others. Oh my God, this is gonna take forever. I need to eat something or I may pass out and I need to stretch my back out from standing up, bending over, standing up, bending over. So let's do that. This is where we're at over here. Still, still got a ways to go. Okay, it is now 3.30. I just took like five minutes to have something to eat. It's so nice and sunny out, but I gotta do this. I am gonna continue with that second bookshelf. That is like the biggest thing. Once we have this second bookshelf done, we're like probably 80% of the way there. And then the rest is like little knickknacks and doodads. So what I'm gonna do is finish sorting all the books, moving them over to that spot. Then I'm gonna clean out the whole bookshelf. Then I'm gonna go through and see if there's any I wanna get rid of. Then I'm gonna see how I wanna like organize them on the bookshelf. And then we're gonna put them back in the bookshelf. How does that sound? Good? Good. So now I'm gonna be sorting through each stack cleaning them and deciding which ones I want to keep and then we're going to get them back in the uh, bookshelf. One stack done, so many more to go. Let's do this on time lapse. POV, you're me on the ground. There's so many more books to clean and sort through. You know it's serious because I put my hair up. I'm gonna clean the bookshelf now. This is still where we're at. <laughs> Okay, these bookshelves are looking way better. And we gotta fill them with some stuff, so let's do that. These are all the books I wanna put in this guy right here. So let's give it a go. Oh no, we're already stacking. Okay, fine, be that way. That's not gonna work. Do we have to start all over? Okay, this cube is right above the children's book one and it's gonna be the gay one. Let's start by cleaning off the books. Oh 
Let's keep the letters and the fiction together. So that's letters. This is a new little free library find. Pretty proud of this one. I guess we could also have a Virginia Woolf section. Maybe, okay, we could have poetry. Cause then of course we have Ma Mary Oliver. Maybe this goes with this. This is, it has a really bad rating, but I kind of love this. It's a like novel about, um, Eleanor Roosevelt and her girlfriend. <laughs> I guess this diaries could go with letters. Another one related to Vita Sackville West. Well, I have a lot of Vita Sackville West ones because I'm a little obsessed with her. And then maybe Empty Without You should go with White Houses because this is Lorena and Eleanor's letter book. See, this is hard, but I'll just do, I'll do letters and diaries together. Sister Love, of course more emily see this is why i'm like should i have a separate emily dickinson because this is emily dickinson's letters to susan and then of course the one that started it all the letters of vita sackville west to virginia wolf and of course a classic whose name i will not say should we try to fill up the whole thing oh wait i have another emily dickinson book that's so beautiful that should go with this Where is it? So we have another queer novel so we'll bring this one in there this is the emily dickinson one that i think is so beautiful and i want to have that like up face out then we have girls can kiss now ah! the ex-girlfriend of my girlfriend is my girlfriend and the fixed stars but that should maybe go with memoir so i'm gonna move that to memoir get in here and we even have room for this which maybe it doesn't need to face out right now i think having just a little Dickinson space right there is cute. Okay, perfect. And if we need to shove more stuff in there, we can. So here's the thing. This is a corner of my bedroom. Anyway, I'm not even a little bit done with bookshelf two. I wanna put all the young adult books in one place. And so I have to find the young adult books that I have. So, okay, we have Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. It's one funeral girl. Okay, now we have to do a bit of a bedside table search. Are you listening? Where the coffee gets cold. Oh, there's some good books over here. I'm gonna keep the ones I know my girlfriend likes to come back to or is currently reading on here and I will take the other ones. And lest we forget this random pile of books over here, what do we have here? This is kind of my bedside table area. This is my girlfriend's architectural model, very beautiful. Okay, so... And this I'm kind of also reading, but I can move it out of the bedroom. So we'll move these out of the bedroom and deal with them. If you thought that was all, you'd be wrong because we have the books at the bottom of the shoe closet. Okay, I found one more YA novel in there. Other than literally that pile of my own young adult novels, this is my stack of YA novels. <laughs> <sighs> which honestly i thought it would be worse because i literally am a young adult author and a lot of these were given to me a lot i got at events some i got from my bookstore arcs whatever so the fact that i only have this many i'm kind of impressed by but all of them are very sentimental to me and some of them are in my friends and i'm not getting rid of them so if they can fit in one cubby they they can all stay that's what i'm gonna say Okay, only one didn't fit and it's my only nonfiction. So maybe I'll just put it with adult nonfiction. And yes, it's completely over stuff, but it works. It fits, that's fine. And now we have every middle grade novel I own, except the ones I wrote, which are down there. And we have to deal with those later. Before I had on top of the bookshelf, all the books that I had read or was reading to help me with my middle grade fantasy that I'm working on. But I don't think that's the best idea now. Also, cause I wanna try to not have too much stuff on top of the bookshelf. When we're done with this, that's kind of the point of it, like clean it up. Okay. One of my favorite middle grade books of all time. If you haven't read this, you must. I know this looks like it is from the library, but it was from a library, a little free library. And I assume it was not, oh yeah, there we go. No longer property of the Seattle Public Library. Okay, that was even easier than the young adult one, so cute. It's been literally six hours and I feel like straight of work and it's only getting worse. Okay, we're gonna do a little 
fast and furious clean of the books that are down on the ground now because cleaning them one by one i don't know i'm gonna just vacuum them and then if there's any that are particularly dirty as i'm putting them on the shelf i'll wash them my hair looks so bad i feel so grody right now but that's fine Okay, with the amount of books on the floor and the shelf space we have, which is one cubby and like a half covered by the plant right now, and two cubbies, I fear we may have to put stuff back on top of here, which is fine. Um, but let's try to get everything we can into the cubbies before we do that. My tripod is broken. It's nearly 7 p.m. I've been doing this for seven hours. I really don't know what I'm doing at this point. All I know is, I have to wipe out the last like cubicle on this bookshelf with alcohol and then oh my god I have to oh there's more books <sighs> okay I have to figure out some way to put them in here there may be no rhyme or reason to it and so don't say anything but right now let's wipe out this last case in this bottom one, I have scripts and uh, screenplays. So I have Fleabag, the scriptures, that's my girlfriend's, the Ladybird screenplay, Travesties by Tom Stoppard, Arcadia by Tom Stoppard, one of my fave plays, Leopoldstadt and the Leopoldstadt playbill with my cousin in it, shout out Jesse, and An Ideal Husband by Oscar Wilde. So I'll keep all those together since it makes sense. I have some more graphic novels. Oh boy. Okay, I want this to look good. This makes no sense, but I'm gonna put my three, I have the three different editions of each book of The Hunger Games, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so I'm gonna put them right on top of that. Let's see if they'll fit. They do. Maybe I should put books I know I wanna look at here and then put the ones that don't really have a place in the other bookshelf because I'm gonna be looking at this much more than I'm gonna be looking at that. So let's do that. Maybe I'll put my really special like Jewish fantasy shtetl type of books um, more front and center. Well, and I guess this kind of makes sense because it's like religion a little bit. Okay, I like that. It's like, it's like the religion shelf because we have American Zion, so Mormonism, Going Clear, Scientology, which <laughs> is it a religion, don't really know. Jewish tales of reincarnation can go over here. So now we're gonna put some books behind there. For my own sanity, I have to tell myself that I'm almost done, but the task that inspired all of this, other than the carpet beetles, was that my girlfriend was like, we should move your books off the floor or at least vacuum where your books were. So let's do that. I can already tell it's crusty, musty, dusty back there. Well, that's something. Okay, how many copies is a normal amount of copies to have of your book? Like, actually, because I want to have a bunch to look at, just to have, like, first editions of each of my books and, like, all the versions. What's a normal amount? Like, five of each version? That feels like too much. Okay, well, I found a few I'm gonna give away, so I'll sign those. Oh, there is no ink in there. These are the ones I am giving away in a little free library. There are quite a few. POV, you're me. What did we learn today? To never give up. It's the next day. 
We learned that we should never give up and that when our period comes, we'll be grateful that we did all that work the day before. And we learned how to be a family and um, that, um, that, bye.